President Biden came in, he doubled the price of gasoline to the consumer, he, and he increased the price of food 30 to 40 percent because of the doubling of the price of gasoline. And uh, that's what caused the inflation. So as inflation went up, the Fed had no choice but raise the interest rates, which put the real estate market in, in a turmoil and then put the banks in a turmoil. So it, it all started. President Biden made the poor people poorer because they buy gasoline every day. She doesn't have a clue. Look at the amount of retail stores that have closed, especially in the inner cities. If the manufacturers are charging you a dollar, yeah. You have to pay your payroll, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your uh, uh, electricity, and the margin in supermarkets traditionally has been 2%. Yeah. The shrinkage, which is the stuff that disappears, the problem is the shrinkage and this additional security has gone up to 6%. And that's the chairman and CEO of United Refining and Red Apple Group, the owner of Gristiti's Supermarkets, John Katsimatini, is with me on Friday on Mornings with Maria, with pushback on Kamala Harris's claims that the inflation crisis on her watch is the result of corporate price gouging. Joining me now with more on President Trump's agenda and what he heard from constituents this past week in Chicago is Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, a member of the Oversight and Financial Services Committee. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. How would you assess the state of the race today? Uh, it's a close race, but I think that Donald Trump is greatly positioned to win. Let me give you a couple of reasons. Number one, Kamala Harris hasn't discussed anything of substance to this point. So when she starts going through substance, through policy, like her economic policy, people start to understand that it's not going to bode well for her. Number two, Donald Trump has never pulled this well in 2016 or in 2020, she's running beh way behind Hillary Clinton and way behind Joe Biden at the two similar times in those two presidential races. And then number three, Kamala Harris cannot run from Joe Biden. I know she's trying to run as a prosecutor, but her current title is vice president of the United States. And she was riding shotgun with Joe Biden, creating one of the worst economies for working families and middle class families in the history of our country while leaving our southern border wide open to more than 10 million illegal immigrants. Well, I believe that Donald Trump is well positioned to win this race. Well, we also haven't heard a peep out of her on foreign policy. And of course, the world moves <laughs> on. This morning, God bless you, sir. Th this Thank morning, uh, we've got news that Israel has sent 100 jet fighters to hit Lebanon in a preemptive strike. They were expecting a strike from Hezbollah. Who is running the country while Kamala Harris is out campaigning and, and Joe Biden has, has tried uh, to, to get Netanyahu to back down against these terrorists? To be quite frank with you, Maria, I have no idea. During the DNC, I mean, they put Joe Biden on at midnight on, yeah. on a Monday, and he gave his speech, and they sent him to California on vacation. Kamala wow. Harris has been running around the country campaigning. I'm not quite sure who's running the place. Um, maybe Susan Rice is still in charge for all we know. I have no yeah. idea. But well, it's not it, good because it, it, it doesn't it, appear to be leadership in our country right now. It, it raises the issue of who's been running the country these past four years and who is expecting to do so in the next four years. Uh, Michelle Obama, when she spoke at the convention this week, basically said, look, she could be a weak candidate, but it's okay because we're going to help her. I mean, that's what I heard. Watch this. They are not perfect. And like all of us, they will make mistakes. But luckily, y'all, this is not just on them. No, uh-uh. This is up to us, all of us, to be the solution that we seek. You know, it, it got me thinking, Congressman, to what President Obama told us on his way out in 2020. Take a listen. P people would ask me, Knowing what you know now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what, if, if I could make an arrangement where um, I had, a, I had a, a stand in, a front man or front woman, and, and they had an earpiece in, and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff, and then I could sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was. Uh, doing all the talking and ceremony, wow. I, I'd be fine with that. Okay. Congressman, he's fine with that. Is, is that the plan? 
it very well might be. Even if you look at the Biden-Harris administration, a lot of the staff are Obama holdovers right. from the Obama-Biden uh, administration. Now you're looking at Kamala Harris. The rumors are already circulating that she's looking at people to hold over from the current administration. Now they have a, an agenda. And I think it was said well on CNN a couple of days ago. The Democrats have been in charge of the country for 12 of the last 16 yeah. years. And uh, in the only time period in them 16 years that have actually worked for the American people is when Donald Trump was president of the United States. That's when our economy was flourishing. That's when every demographic group was getting ahead. Every economic group was getting ahead. And that's when we had no new conflicts and no new wars. It wow. was under Donald Trump. Whether it's Obama, Joe Biden, or Kamala Harris, Poor people and working families have fallen behind. Do you think they get that now after four years uh, under uh, Joe Biden? Do you think uh, these swing state groups, blacks, Hispanics, those people who Donald Trump needs in his corner, do they understand that better today? I believe so, but it's also incumbent on the campaign and everybody who's supporting President Trump, myself included, to make sure that message is clear. Look at Kamala Harris's policies if she ever decides to tell you. The mm. policies that have already come out are disastrous for an economy. And to be blunt, Maria, it's not going to hurt the rich guy. The rich guy is going to find a way to survive. Who is right. go who's going to suffer are working families, seniors on fixed incomes. They are going to suffer yeah. while the Democrats just want you to feel the vibes. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you, you're not going to be able to use all that joy to buy dinner. So we'll see how that plays out in the coming weeks, 70 plus days away from Election Day. Congressman, it is good to see you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.